Behind me is the Repertoire Theater. It's home to three ghosts that haunt this facility. Tonight, I'm gonna to try to make contact with each one of them and see what happens. And even though this night starts off very slowly, I heard like a rustling, I thought it was you. To be or not to be. It all builds up to a shocking crescendo. The hell was that? My name is Chris Boris, and I'm the world's first ghost behaviorist. I've come up with a groundbreaking ghost classification system that brings ghostly contact to a whole new level. So you were involved in that crash, correct? My mission is to get to a spirit psyche and diagnose the problems plaguing them. He wants to kill somebody. Post-traumatic stresses, coping disorders, I've seen it all. I'm here to counsel the dead and the homeowners they haunt. I'm standing on the stage of the Repertoire Theater, which became a theater in 1946. Before that, it was a Baptist church, which began in 1907. The stage right here, which I'm standing on, used to be the previous altar, and some of the people still working here have actually smelt the smell of incense kind of haunting the building every once in a while. Like I said, there are three spirits that haunt the repertoire theater, and the first one we're gonna talk about is a gentleman that actually haunts this part of the building, the theater. And when people see him, they, uh, it's usually the stage hands working on the stage, they're building sets, they'll look out into the audience and they'll see a man sitting in the exact center of those seats. All right, so the office area, which is on the third floor, people here have seen a lady they dub the lady in white. Many times the people working here will interact with her when they leave the light on in this area and they'll hear a voice call out to them saying, turn the light off. I'm not totally sold on the fact that she is a lady. I think she's more of a teenager based on an EVP that I ended up catching here a couple months ago while taking tour with the director of the theater. And many people have said that they've heard her say, turn out the lights, please. So now I'm down in the basement, and this is where we find our third and final spirit, and this is the most tragic of them all. It's of a little girl that died very, very tragically near here, and it's the main reason of why I'm here tonight. So back in the 1800s, this land right here used to be residential homes, and it was home to the Sullivans. A little girl named Anna Sullivan in 1906, she was playing outside, her ball went out into the street and she went after it. It was a busy intersection and a trolley slammed into her. Very tragic. If you look at the newspaper clippings from that time, it says her body was dragged like 100 feet down the road and everyone that saw this sight started crying at what had unfolded. Here we are 115 years later and this Anna Sullivan has not moved on yet, but she likes to play pranks on the people here. She'll move things around. One interesting thing that happened is the director brought Girl Scout cookies into this area and when she came back in the morning, they were gone. So we know that she has a sweet tooth so I'm here tonight as a ghost doctor, and I hope I can heal this spirit and give her a little bit more comfort in the afterlife here tonight. All right, so I've got a huge bag of tricks here tonight that I'm gonna try implementing on the spirits here because I wanna be able to interact with each one of these spirits, and I hope to get names, interactions, and heal the spirits as well. All right, so I'm gonna put this REM pod on the table here. This is where the, the gentleman likes to show up. So hopefully, if he wants to sit back and watch us, we can set that thing off. All right, so I've got my ovulus, and I've got some EDI meters. Hopefully we can make some contact with the spirits here tonight. Got a word already, which is tree. I'm not sure what that's about. All right, if they're, if. 
foliage. Tree and foliage. Hmm. I don't see anything like that. Oh, oh, there's a tree right there. <laughs> is that what you're referring to? This is exactly why I love using the Ovilus. I ended up getting tree and foliage on this device. And I only get those words if I'm in a, a cemetery or something. So I look down, I look, I'm looking around and hmm. on the edge of the stage, bam, there it is, a fake shrub <laughs> just sitting there. All right, the gentleman's here. Can you spike one of those meters for me that's on the stage? I'm here for you. I know the people here call you George. Is that your real name? Do you like to be called George? I really want to interact with you, but you, you have to make that first step. You gotta spike one of those meters for me and we can have a dialogue and we can talk. Come on, George, where are you? Oh, come on, George, you gonna make me work for this? So it sounds like you, you like watching them put on plays. Do you like Hamlet? To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles. Come on, give me a spike for that, come on. <laughs> was it? No, that was me, poop. Oh. I don't know, I don't even feel anything in this room. I, I don't think George is even here. So it's kind of interesting with this George spirit. I'm trying to get him to interact. And if I had to guess, I would say that this is classified as a wandering spirit. You know, he just wanders in, watches the, the people put on their play, and then kind of wanders out. I don't think he's here at this moment, so like I said, he's probably a wandering spirit. I'm definitely feeling something up here. It's a different energy. I know there's a lady in white up in this area. But I don't think you're a lady, are you? Are you a teenager? All right, I've got something I want you to listen to. All right, so two months ago, I was up here with Bonnie. You know Bonnie, she's the director. I caught your voice. Do you wanna hear it? You'll hear your voice. Um. Many people have said that they've heard her say, turn out the lights, please. That's you. You, you said, so what? Right? Is that you? All right, so this is a rare Panasonic digital recorder that records at a very low digital bit rate and the theory is, since it's so low, it picks up sounds that shouldn't be there, like voices. Why do you tell people to turn off the lights? Is this your home? Do you have anything to tell me? Is that you? Heard some rustling over there. I haven't moved. Is that the phonograph? I heard it again. Is that you? Are you playing with us? During my EVP session, I kept hearing a rustling sound in the back corner where the phonograph was. Is that you? Even though I had no idea what the cause of the sound was, my digital recorder ended up capturing an EVP at the same exact moment this shuffling sound was heard. Is this your home? I hear like, is this your home? No. Now watch this clip unedited as I point out when each sound occurred. Is this your home? Do you have anything to tell me? 
I believe the exact timing of both these events is more than just coincidence and makes me feel that contact was trying to be made. I heard it again. Okay, I'm walking into the prop room now. The light in white is also said to be in this area. Seconds later, I caught another EVP of the lady in white trying to be sarcastic again by calling me a derogatory name. After pulling out my SB7, I seemed to get one more response that came from this lady in white. Can you tell me your name? Is this confirmation that the lady in white's name is Teresa? Can you tell me your name? All right, so we are in the final location, the basement, and I hope we can make contact with the little girl here. All right, Anna, my name is Chris. I am here for you. I've got a meter right here. If you touch it, you can put blue lights on this thing and we can have a conversation. Do you understand? Can you, can you touch this meter for me? Well, I wanna talk with you because I'm, I'm really concerned <clears throat> about why you're still here. Because it's been, you know, 115 years since you passed, and uh, I, do, do you need any help? If you do, just just spike this meter for me. Can you do that for me? My name is Chris. I'm a ghost behaviorist. I'm sure you're probably really, really embarrassed about what happened. Because, you know, it's it's not a pleasant way to go out the way you did. You know, you got you got hit. It was an accident. You know, those things happen. Do you not want to talk about that stuff? We can talk about something else. Would you like some toys? Ugh, I've got some toys. You know, you like this. This is a music box. I'm sure you probably had one of these when you were little. All right, Anna, this is a music box that you can set off by just by walking in front of it. This works on a motion sensor. I'm gonna put this right here. And if you walk in front of it, it'll go off. You can do that. All you have to do, is that you? All you have to do is walk in front of it. There you go. You like that? Walk in front of it again. Can you hit that meter then, if you like that? Oh. Are you gonna use this to talk to me then? Can you walk in front of it again? <laughs> Thank you. Are you gonna use this to talk to me then? Anna? Okay. <laughs> so do you like being here then, I take it? Th this is your home, right? Or used to be your home. Do you like cookies? Do you want me to bring a cookie in here for you? It's my gift to you. If you want it, just walk in front of that. Are you not hungry then? Did you leave? Wow, that's so cool. Now it's not doing it. 
Okay, just making sure it's still working. Yeah, one thing I've noticed is that child spirits, especially with these type of devices, they'll play with them just a little bit and then they're just off to the next thing. This has to be a little girl because they, it has the attention span of one. Every time I bring out this music box, when a, a little child is known to be in the area, they play with it, just like at the Oliver House. Got your attention now, huh? They play with it just a little bit and then they get bored with it and move on to whatever the next thing is. So yeah, I, I found that really cool that the same exact thing happened as the Oliver House that we did last time. All right, Anna, I've got another little game we can play here. Now these are lights that you can interact with. If you touch them, you can set them off. Kind of like Christmas lights. You like Christmas? So they're all purple now, but if you touch them, you can turn them different colors. And then to sweeten the deal, I know you've got a sweet tooth. I've got a cookie here, chocolate cookie, just for you. I brought this just for you. Can you smell that? That smells good. That is for you. Can you touch one of those lights as a thank you? You don't have to be afraid of me. I'm, I'm, I'm here for you. I'm pretty nice and friendly. There you go. Do you like that? Do it again. That cookie is for you. I, I, I want you to enjoy that. Can you spike two lights this time? Can you do that for me? Is that all you're gonna give me? Just one, one little flash? Now, as I was trying to get Anna to spike the meter, the theater director heard me addressing the girl as Anna and told me the following. So, according to other research that we have done, her name is Mary. Oh, I was able to find the actual newspaper clipping and it said Anna. What we both didn't realize at the time is we both had two different news clippings. Mine reported the girl's name as Anna, while hers reported the girl's name as Mary. Since this is the case, this was something we definitely had to get to the bottom of. Is your name Mary? Oh. oh. Is your name Anna? Flash that light. Ah, oh, son of a gun, okay. You're, so, your name is Mary? Mary, is your parents here? Are your parents here? At this exact moment, we caught this EVP. Are your parents here? Are your parents here? So I'm just afraid that you're just a, a little girl lost in the afterlife with no parents and you're just wandering looking for mommy. I hope I I hope I got that wrong. Is 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 that incorrect? Is that not what's going on? Do you have your parents? Yes? Oh, thank you, thank you. I, that is a load off my mind. The one question that I had for this little girl that was just burning in my mind was if her parents were here. That was the one thing I was so concerned about. When I asked Mary the first time, are your parents here? She said, no. Are your parents here? And I think this was to tell me that no, they're not here right now. But when I asked her if she had her parents in the afterlife. Do you have your parents? She confirmed that she did. Yes. Oh. This right here goes to show that wording these questions just right is imperative. And I even tried to make contact with her mom later. Mrs. Sullivan, can you come forward and say hello? And obviously nothing happened because she said her parents weren't there. 
That was cool. Both of them went off. That, oh, that. I love it. But forgive my enthusiasm. I, I just find this. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just so excited to interact with you. I, I find this so fascinating. You know, what's interesting, too, is I told her to, to the next time she spikes that to spike two of them. And she's been spiking two of them every time since. Is that why you're spiking two of them? Could you spike that again just, just so I know you're here? Ah, well, I'm glad I got the one answer that I wanted. I wanted to make sure she was taken care of. Her parents were here. Because I hear the uh, little girls just in the afterlife, just hanging around the building, you know, you, fear, you assume the worst. I wonder if she'd come back and just... Maybe, you gotta lure her with something else though. Oh man. Oh, oh You said that? She was like, yeah. Did you see it go off? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so now that we've established contact, I'm setting up all kinds of equipment and hoping we can get more than one piece of technology here to pick up this little girl. We've got thermal cameras, the stick figure camera, and yeah, just all these cameras focused at one little location here. Now I have some peanut butter. This smells amazing. So, ah, uh, I know when I was a kid, I loved peanut butter. So I hope uh, you do too. Do you like that? Do you like peanut butter? Now I've got a camera right there. Is it picking me up as a stick figure? Yeah. Okay, now I've got a camera right there. Okay, if you, okay, cool, thank you. Now, if you really try, that camera can pick up your body image. Can you show up right in this area and, and pick up the peanut butter? Can you touch my hand? Nothing yet with the stick figure? Yeah, I don't feel nothing around my hand either. So what do you like to do? Do you like to play pranks on the people here? Can you, oh, you do. <laughs> okay. Do you like getting their reactions then too? Is that funny for you? Boy, you're pretty quiet, aren't you? You're a quiet one. All right, well, thank you for clarifying and talking with us. I'm gonna leave that cookie down here and uh, you can just feed off that and do whatever you need to do. This was just an incredible interaction because even though Mary was a little bit apprehensive, I was still able to coax her out of her comfort zone. So what do you like to do? Do you like to play pranks on the people here? Oh, you do? What's even more interesting is that Mary also seemed to love spiking the meters when I wasn't paying attention or my back was turned. <laughs> what are you doing? Before leaving, I decided to set up a camera to see what would happen in our absence. It was only two minutes after we left that Mary began playing with the lights in ways that she never did in front of us. I ended up leaving the camera on for over an hour and this moment right here is the only time these lights went off. As you can see, she had a heyday with these lights because she was spiking them with more intensity than when I was in the room with her. Simply incredible. Just as I was getting ready to call it a night, the theater director informed me of one last haunted area I should check. It's a place where they keep all their theater props, and according to her, this is where something darker seems to be hiding out in. It's also the location where they've had a past ghost hunter scratched on the arm. There's all kinds of coats and wardrobe changes and people have felt really weird feelings in this area. One investigator also got scratched, so if we find anything negative here, we are going to cleanse this place out big time. So upon entering this area, boy, I tell you what, the energy in here is quirky as hell. 
and uh, I, I think it's because there's so many different clo pieces of clothing. This is what I like to call a Frankenstein tulpa. And if you know what a tulpa is, it's, a, it's an energy that's kind of conjured. Well, since we have so many pieces of clothing, what happens is all these little pieces of energy kind of clump together in a Frankenstein-like manner and, and actually come up with their own consciousness that you know, is very erratic, just like Frankenstein was, and, and kind of lashes out at people, which it has in the past. So I'm, I'm thinking that's what might reside here. If there's anything here, anyone here that wants to get their story out or just interact with me, I've got a, two meters on this table here. Can you touch one of them? You'll set a bunch of lights off. I know somebody was scratched in this area. I want to know who you are or what you are. Can you understand me? Do you know what I'm saying to you? Yep, that was me. I've got a recorder here. It'll pick up your voice. I want to ask you a couple questions. Did you live in this building? Why did you scratch that woman? Do you like pain? Did you live in this building? Did you live in this building? Even though I've captured this ghostly voice, yeah, I heard like a, a like a no. Asked. I'm absolutely shocked at what I captured next. Do you like pain? Whoa, what was that thing at the end? Do you like pain? The hell was that? Do you like pain? It's weird. It kind of sounds like it, I asked, "Do you like pain?" And it sounds like I like pain. Is this your place? Do you like pain? After doing two more lengthy EVP sessions, no further voices were captured. Nothing. So it makes me wonder what the heck that noise, that voice was that said, I like pain or... So that first time I got two things and then nothing. Huh, that's telling. Got nothing on the meters. All right, normally I wouldn't do this. You like scratching people. Can you scratch my arm? You probably can't scratch me because I got protection. All right, scratch my arm now. It was feeling a little bit cold, but now it like dissipated. It like I felt something like move in and move out real quick. I don't know what to make of that. So we ended up getting some really weird responses with the digital recorder of about pain. And since this place has a history and a pass to it where other investigators have gotten scratched. I'm going to cleanse this area the best way I know how. This is something I've constructed. This is the first ever portable Buddhist altar and I've created this because I really need this in my work because it helps me purify certain areas from negativity and evil spirits and just really cleanses out the energy in an area. So to any spirit that's here, I know that when I mentioned something about pain, you really resonated to that. I, I hope this helps you and cleanses you and heals you. I use Tibetan singing bowls because it clears the vibrational space of an area. It does a very, very good job of it. 
So I'm hoping with this ritual, the repertoire theater won't experience anything negative further in this building. I cut the cords of negativity. The repertoire theater was very interesting because I seemed to run into both good spirits and bad spirits, but the most fun I had was interacting with the spirit of Mary. Can you walk in front of it again? <laughs> I wish I could have talked to her a little bit more, but you know how that goes with kids and strangers. They're just overly cautious in those type of situations. But if I had to classify the other spirits in this location, I'd have to say the lady in white is a hungry ghost. Just because she likes this place, doesn't want to move on, and she likes that office area. As for the spirit of Mary, well, I feel that she could also be a hungry spirit or a stuck spirit because even though she is happy where she's at, I feel like she needs just a little bit more time to figure out where she needs to be in the afterlife. And hopefully the other spirits at the Repertoire Theater can find peace within its walls as well.